Welcome to our lecture online. Here is the follow-up question that we did on the previous video and again it had the same start and notice that all that text up there is really not necessary if you already know the basic principles of nuclear, nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. You can only have nuclear fusion or nuclear fission if the total mass of the daughter products is less than the mass you started with. If it's less that means there's a mass defect, leftover mass that gets converted into energy. But if it's not, if the end products have more mass, then the reaction will naturally, of course, not occur. So we really shouldn't need any of that. We do need those numbers. Typically, we don't have any of those memorized. And the only question important here in this question is that the kinetic energy in KeV of the alpha particle, when the nucleus of polonium-210 at rest undergoes alpha decay. So we have polonium-210, we have alpha decay, meaning it shoots out an alpha particle, and they're asking for the kinetic energy in kilo electron volts. Now, here, this question, especially because of the answers they give us, is a little tricky. The reason is that one of the answers which is wrong is the most likely answer you'll come up with thinking that's the correct answer. So let me explain. All right, what we're going to do is figure out how much mass is left over, the mass defect, from this reaction and then we're going to turn that into energy. So the energy released in this nuclear decay of an alpha particle being, being shot out from a polonium atom. So we have the mass of a polonium right here. So we have 209.9 um, That's how much mass we start with. And then we subtract from that the alpha particle that's being emitted. And the alpha particle, we have the mass right here, which is 4.002603. And if you subtract that, we get 37208.9.205. Now, what do we end up with where the polonium shoots out an alpha particle? Well, then we end up with two less protons. Now we have 82 protons which makes it into lead. We have four less nucleons, that means from 210 we go down to 206. Notice the mass of a lead atom is this much, and this is the mass that we have when we subtract the, um, the alpha particle from the polonium, and notice that this mass is greater than the mass of a lead atom, a lead 206. Hmm, which means that the difference between the two is what we call the mass defect, the mass that is lost, because we only need this much mass to make the lead, and we had more mass after the alpha particle is shot out, so therefore we have extra mass, the mass defect, which then gets converted to energy. So let's subtract the mass of lead to a 5974455. So 3 minus 5, that's 8, 6, that's 1, 12, that's 8, 9, that's 5. 0, 0, 0. So this is what we call the mass defect. Defect. And the mass defect then gets converted to energy. For every atomic mass unit, we get 932 MeVs, million electron volts divided by C squared. Or the energy we get is simply 932 million electron volts. The C squared just converts the mass to energy. All right, so. What we need to do now is multiply this times 932. Now, of course, on this test, you just have to kind of work it out on paper. But to save some time here, we're going to use a calculator. So 0 0.005818 multiplied times 932. And so we end up with, when we multiply this, so we have 0 0.005818 atomic mass units, and we multiply that times 932 MeV per atomic mass unit, we end up with 5.422 MeV, which of course is 5,422 KeVs. And at this point, you may go, wow, look, I found the right answer, and circle B and move on. If you did that, you end up with the wrong answer. That's not the right answer. Remember, this is the kinetic energy, or this is the energy released, but not all of the kinetic energy goes to the alpha particle. For simplicity, we know that most of it goes to the alpha particle, but not all of it. Some of it also goes to the polonium, well, actually now that's the lead nucleus that is left over. So, let me illustrate. 
So we have polonium and then splits up into an alpha particle that goes one direction and then in the other direction we have the lead and notice that some of the kinetic energy goes into lead. Only a small fraction of it, but enough to make this the wrong answer. Now when you think about it, the only plausible answer at this point, because the other two are bigger, so you know that these two cannot be correct, this cannot be correct because that's assuming that all the energy goes into the alpha particle, which is of course not true, some of it goes into the lead nucleus. That means the only possible answer we have left is A. You can simply use that logic and go, A is the answer, and you move on to the next problem. However, let's see if we can kind of figure out how to calculate it in case we were interested. So here we have to use conservation of momentum. Initially, the particle is at rest, so it has zero momentum. And afterwards, we have the mv, I'll use large letters for the lead, plus mv, small letters for the alpha particle. So what we can do here is we can do the ratio of the velocities. We can say that little mv is equal to big mv. And then we can say that v over m, uh, v over big V is equal to big M over little m. Now notice that this is equal to 206 divided by 4, which is about 51.5. So you could say, let's call it 50. Let's say the ratio of the mass of the nucleus of lead is about 50 times the mass of the alpha particle, which means that their velocities have that same ratio. The velocity of the alpha particle is 50 times the velocity of the, of the uh, lead nucleus. So the velocity of the alpha particle is equal to 50 times the velocity of the lead. Okay, now, we, can we then figure out the relative kinetic energy? And the answer is yes. We can then say that the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is equal to 1 half mv squared and the kinetic energy of the lead is equal to one half big M V squared, big V squared. So let's see how much bigger this is compared to this. What is the ratio? So the kinetic energy of the alpha particle divided by the kinetic energy of the lead is equal to one half M V squared divided by one half big M, big V squared. Now, of course, the halves cancel out. Notice that the mass of this is 50 times the mass of that, so this would be M divided by 50 M. And for the velocity, this is 50 times the velocity, so we could say that um, uh, 50 V squared and V squared like this. Notice the M's cancel out, the V's cancel out. Uh, then we end up with 50 squared divided by 50, which is about 50. Remember, it's about roughly 50. With other words, the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is about 50 times the kinetic energy of the lead. So 2% of the kinetic energy actually goes into the lead nucleus. So what is 2% of this number right here? Well, that's roughly, so 2% is approximately 100 keV, and if we subtract it from this, we get that, right? If you take 100 keV away, you end up with that. So this would be the keV of the alpha particle, and about 100 keV would be the kinetic energy of the lead particle. Now again, we didn't have to do all that. We just confirmed that, yes, answer A has to be the correct answer, but you could have already said simply by deduction that these two are not possible. The maximum kinetic energy or the maximum energy release is this much. Most of it will go to the alpha particle. Some of it will go to bismuth. So therefore, A is the only plausible answer without doing all the calculations. But at least this helps you understand why that is the case. And that is how it's done. Tricky. <laughs>